Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of April 26, 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Now, before I jump into this week, I do wanna take a little bit of a step back. If you'll remember last week, we talked quite a bit, and we talked about how important it was to pay attention. What is happening in your own life, certainly, but also for the collective because it is the events or was the events that took place last week that not only spoke to larger themes that are going to come up for us as a collective once we get into 2021 but also as i've been saying with saturn newly in the sign of aquarius we also want to pay attention because this is going to be our very first clues into a larger energy coming up later this decade which has to do with Pluto entering the sign of Aquarius starting in 2023, moving in and out right until 2024 when Pluto will move in much more permanently, well, for a nice long stay for the better part of two decades. So there are a couple of things we can know about what happened recently. And the main thing that I was paying attention to, of course, like a lot of people was the way that very quickly, almost overnight, it was gas, right, oil, that became worthless. Now, of course, I know there's something about future markets and calculations, and it's not that it's actually worthless, it has to do with storage and so on, and I understand that, and I know that we are in rare once-in-a-lifetime times right now with what is happening for the collective, with the great pause that we are in. And of course, socially, we saw protests as well, people resisting this unique opportunity to be still. And there are practical reasons for that. There are personal reasons for that. That's fine. That is not for us to judge any of the events that I um, have mentioned so far. But here are some things that we can understand that we can garner from this. I remember speaking in the decade ahead horoscope that I put out a year ago. And I said 2021, big year, social uh, and collective frustration. People speaking up on the one hand, we'll see this very strong contrast between a focus on and a care for the collective, but also this sense of the individual and people wanting to do things in a very individual way. We would also see some sense of the future economy, how that is going to be, what is emerging is gonna to start to be revealed. And so we've seen that already, right? In addition to the social unrest that we've seen, we've also seen that the very nature of work is starting to go through a transformation. A lot of people who once worked in offices are now working from home. Now this is everything from maybe administrative or creative work that one might do, but it's also work such as call centers, for example. I know that in Ontario, I don't know if it's still the case, but when I was in school way back in the day, I worked in a call center in my province. And I know that at that time, so many years ago, we were very proud of the fact that Ontario was one of the call center capitals of the world. I don't know if that's still the case. But all of these call center jobs are now being directed from home. How likely is it to go back to the way it was before, especially in light of the fact that right now we're just getting a little taste with Saturn newly in the sign of Aquarius, but we'll be more fully in the sign of Aquarius once we navigate into 2021 and beyond. The very nature of how we relate to each other is going through a transformation and there's resistance on that front, but it's changing our lives in very practical ways and real ways, regardless of how we feel about it. But it is right now that the infrastructure, the technologies are being worked out, the kinks are being worked out, the systems and structures are being put into place to allow this sense of, on the one hand, greater isolation but also greater integration, which is what we are going to see again once Pluto steps into Aquarius in a more pronounced way, in a more all-encompassing way. But the other thing is 
that both Uranus and Pluto are connected to energy. Pluto itself speaks to oil. And it is Uranus that speaks to electricity, how we power things, the energizing of things and, and objects. It is Pluto that is thought to be oil. It represents the core of the earth and it is symbolically speaking oil that comes from very deep within the earth to energize. But I know that I have been talking about this conjunction of Saturn and Pluto quite a bit. It took place at the beginning of the year, right around January 12th is when that was exact in the sign of Capricorn. And I have told you that the last time we saw this exact energy take place, these two planets meeting in the sign of Capricorn was 500 years ago. And it represented a shift in power in global power and who has the power. Well, the world that we have created since then has made it that, and I would agree arguably, it can be said that the countries in the world that have the greatest power are countries with oil. That oil is intimately connected to not just the, the power of countries, if you will, but the wealth of countries however you want to judge that for good or not good that can also be seen as subjective and so then what happens when the core the root of power of so many very powerful places and cultures and influences in the world is no longer worth anything and i do think that it may very well be this shift of energizing the world that oil has represented of powering up the world that oil has represented as it goes through a shift this very well may be part of what shifts global power our understanding of who has the power with uranus now in the sign of taurus changing the dynamics of the economy itself the dynamics of money bringing a whole new perspective whole new understanding of how it is that we understand what's worth something and what isn't and how it is that we go about exchanging worth in terms of how we pay for things from a, a very practical literal standpoint the actual methods that we use to pay to something more subjective like what's worth money and what isn't and then you add this element as well that there is this movement that has grown very strong recently of being more self-contained and so we see more people interested in things like solar energy or ways in which to bring energy to their living spaces to fill their needs that are not necessarily dependent on something that has to be refilled again and again that can stand alone in and of itself sort of a self generating generator right and the technologies or the methods that we have for that now and what could be has also come into focus and so all of these are ultimately clues they are clues and insights into and as astrologers what we do is we formulate connections between what is happening celestially in our lives here on earth and we can learn from our current environment to understand which way the energy is going and the power of that the reason for that is to decide if we like the way that the energy is going or not so that we can actively choose to be part of more of what it is that we want how it is that we want the energy to be realized and in this way astrology becomes a type of empowerment and a, a tool really to better exercise our free will and so we have this opportunity right now we're seeing the very beginning of larger more immersive transits that are going to be coming up as we move further into this decade right now yes there is resistance things feel like they've moved very quickly especially with mars having met saturn at the very end of march beginning of april but it is going to be these shifts and these changes that are more fully embraced as we get to the end of the year and the great conjunction occurs that is when this current sense of where it is we are individually and how that fits into the collective and whether or not our technology 
is matching our needs now to be separate and yet integrated, that is when we are going to see a greater leveling up with new inventions. But this is the very beginning. And so I am not one to um, use astrology in a financial perspective. I know that there are some excellent financial astrologers out there who like to do that, who like to do things like astrology and stocks. I know that that is a specialty in and of itself. I like to use astrology differently. And so that's why you get me and my interpretations of the sky. But I am going to just fudge the rule, this personal rule I have just a little bit. And I am going to say this. It is going to be while Pluto is moving through Capricorn that I believe we have really seen the strength and the pervasiveness of oil as a force of power in the world, how it fuels structures and structures of power, it fuels it, sure, literally, but certainly in terms of the wealth that it indicates. And so if you are somebody who is inclined towards investments, then I would say right now with oil being so cheap, it may be a good time to invest. But once we get further, especially once we get into 2023, and as Pluto starts moving to the very end of the sign of Capricorn, that is very likely to be the highest that oil is going to be worth between now and then. And if it is that as Pluto is in Capricorn at an anorectic degree, which means the very late degrees of that sign, that is going to be the best time to sell if you want to make a profit. Because once Pluto goes into Aquarius, we are going in a very different direction. And this idea of people being more self-contained, finding sources of energy, to energize everything that they need, well, it is going to shift very dramatically. And we will especially see this being embraced, these new technologies to bring energy being embraced that much more fully once we get into 2026 and 2027 and Pluto trines Uranus. That is going to be a further, not only implementation of the seeds that begin at the end of this year with the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn, but it is also going to be then that the symbolism of energy that both Uranus and Pluto represent as modern planets speaking to our modern world, it is going to be then that there is a harmonious and powerful integration that occurs. And that very integration is going to bring with it brand new systems and structures and a very quick pervasiveness of it. With Uranus moving fast as lightning, uh, representing what once was a dream, things moving so quickly. I know that one of the things that has led to our world so quickly becoming cleaner is the fact that planes aren't flying as much. Now, you can imagine for someone like me, I've told you I've got a Sag moon, it is very hard for me to not have a trip planned. And I had lots of trips going on this year that have all been paused. I am participating in the great pause right along with you. But then what is also being expressed is the mixed feelings, how much oil it is, how much pollution it is that is associated with flying itself. So how is it now that we reconcile that? Well, I actually think that this right now having these oil um, powered jets, it may very well be that that goes through a profound shift, that new technology that allows us to be out in the world, you know, in lightning speed. That very technology may be part of, that new technology may be part of what presents itself to us once we get to Uranus trine Pluto. So there are very exciting times ahead. I am such a big picture kind of person. And so I have been curious and excited and hopeful, even with the sadness that I am part of and that I feel, even with the uncertainty that so many of us feel and will be feeling as we head into May. Remember Venus, as I spoke of in the Venus retrograde special that I just posted, yesterday. 
Venus in Gemini. Gemini having to do with trips in general, travel in general. Usually short trips are covered by the energy of Gemini. But during the month of May, Venus essentially holding, like literally holding a conversation with Neptune is going to make journeying that much more nebulous, that much more uncertain, something that we're hoping for, that we're wanting, and yet questions are there, fear is there. And so I am part of the collective, I'm feeling that as well. And yet we have this opportunity to look forward, to decide what kind of world we want to participate in that is unfolding before us now. And of course, my hope is that we choose love, that we choose wisdom in all things, knowing that what that is can be different for different people. So now let's bring the energy back to this week. And we begin this week with what has been called the most surprising day of the year or the most shocking day of the year. And there very likely will be a surprise a minute for a lot of us out there in at least one area of life and certainly for the collective as well. I think about the sense of how oil dipped so low, it shocked the world. How oil is so connected to the economy and the fact that we saw this very dramatic, very shocking shift take place, what some people called bizarre, which is very in alignment with Uranus. Uranus can be bizarre. Well, that's pretty surprising. We've already had that. What more surprises could be in store for us? How is it that we are going to understand value and what has value? And especially personally, what is it that we value? What is our lives showing us that we genuinely value? I think that is going through a profound transformation and these so-called bizarre occurrences, well, that is gonna be part of this week. We start the week with the most surprising day of the year. This is happening on Sunday, Sunday morning. So this is energy we are building towards. And then late in the week, right around Thursday or Friday, depending on where you are on the planet, it is gonna be Mercury meeting Uranus in the sky, furthering the sense of surprise, but also encouraging us to make connections, to have conversations, to make sense of what feels perhaps nonsensical, to find some sense of normality where it feels particularly random. And of course, if you are a spiritually inclined person to find meaning during this time is part of the opportunity as well. It will be at the very beginning of the week. And for some places, it's gonna be very late Saturday night. For most of the world, it is gonna take place on Sunday as we start this week. Mercury will be speaking in a type of conversation that astrologers call a square with Jupiter. Mercury is moving through the sign of Aries right about now. There is heightened hope, overconfidence perhaps, a sense of not necessarily knowing what we feel and where it is that we are. Is there a sense of disconnect, what we're hoping for, what we believe we can actually have agency to affect? Does it match up or not? This is gonna be part of the contemplation and the conversation that we're having. And then we have that light bulb of an energy, this awakening of an energy with the sun and Uranus. And it is going to be right around Monday that Mercury will change signs, moving into the sign of Taurus as well. So you can expect a whole lot of conversations, collectively, especially around this idea of the economy. I know that there has been some concern with economies beginning to open up in some parts of the world. But once Mercury moves into the sign of Taurus, it is going to be something that is likely going to be an increased conversation, an increased desire. How can we do it? Can we make a plan? Or is it going to be more sudden? That is going to be something that maybe there is some caution around at first. It will be Tuesday that Mercury will speak in a conversation of tension with Saturn. Saturn has to do with authority figures. 
and what the experts are saying between what it is that people are talking about and wanting and saying and what it is that the authorities are affirming there is tension there there is a sense of having to try and find a way to have these two different types of people if you will to find a way to talk to each other even these two parts of ourselves to find a way to talk to each other but it is as we navigate late into the week once mercury meets uranus things are changing very quickly they are being propelled very quickly and again i'm not making a judgment call on any of this i'm not saying something is positive or negative just that the indications are that things are going to start clicking and changing very very quickly and that what continues to occur in the world will likely have an erratic and yes bizarre quality to it but at the same time considering we're coming up to may all that nebulous energy that can't be good for viruses as people start traveling more locally we are going to see the fear of what has been occurring continue and we're likely going to see people continue to socially isolate in some way or another throughout the month of may for sure even as economies start opening up even as people start saying yes this is what we want but what are people actually doing that may end up being a different thing what i love about this week for us and there's always something to love certainly well i do love how i for one am of the belief and this may be the aquarian in me but i think life sometimes doesn't have enough surprises yes surprises some are better than others and as much as the energy can be shocking it can also be delightful surprises as well again depending on where this is falling in your chart depending on how you choose to engage this energy, where it is that we are willing to be creative, where it is that we're willing to think towards the future, to think in an inventive, ingenious way, we're able to find truly creative, out-of-the-box solutions for how we navigate this time. And it is these very solutions that not only can promise a sense of progression, but also genuine optimism as well. In an instant, we may start to feel different, feel more free, feel more liberated, feel more excited. We are leaping into the future and we'll be talking about that. Chances are in the media, there's gonna be new discoveries, new technologies that make us very excited about what's ahead. And it is exciting. The future is calling. It is being indicated now. And as always, my hope is that as part of that, we collectively choose to make it a truly wise and loving future to arrive at. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. As well, I would love to hear what you think about what is coming up in the bigger picture as part of the decade ahead how you feel in your own life that this week gave you some clues, some harbinger of what is coming up for you in 2021 and beyond. I'd love to read your stories. And of course, if you wanna know how all of this speaks to you in your sign, log on to nadiashaw.com, sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more, all of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. Special horoscopes are up, including Saturn special horoscopes, Venus retrograde special horoscopes, and they are available for download on my website as well, NadiaShaw.com. So Saturn and Aquarius, up now. That is a deep dive into what this means for you and your sign. And it was yesterday, as I mentioned, that I posted on my YouTube channel, the Venus retrograde for the collective, as well as preview horoscope. So have a look at that. It does give you insight into what we can look forward to in this summer of love, but also the preview horoscopes give you insight into what this Venus retrograde season is going to mean for you in your sign. I hope you absolutely love it. 
I do have my books wherever books are sold. You can get one of my books, Prayers to the Sky. Thank you so much. When it came out, it was a number one new release for as long as they allow uh, new releases, the new release chart. And it was, it stayed in the top five. That was really exciting. So thank you for that. And The Body and the Cosmos was also a number one new release when it came out as well. Thank you for resonating with what it is that I have to share. Again, you can get this wherever books are sold, including my first book, Astrology Realized. Now, The Universe is Wise and Loving. This is my upcoming book. It will be available everywhere books are sold um, August 22nd, so way into the summer. Uh, but advanced copies with free gifts worth over $200, uh, that is available on my website, NadiaShaw.com. And this is all about the nodes of the moon. It's volume one, the nodes of the moon, where I go through each of the signs and houses in the first part, and then the nodes being aspected by planets in the second part. Uh, and we look at the philosophical assertion that the nodes make, uh, why I say the universe is wise and loving, and so much more in this book. And I, again, I hope you love it. And yes, if you get it, you get all kinds of free gifts worth over $200. As a side note, I do want to take one second to thank my friend, Jessica Lenyato. She sent me a copy of her book, Astrology for Real Relationships. Uh, and I didn't even realize, but I had a whole bunch of stuff sitting like in the back somewhere of unopened mail and boxes and Amazon boxes. And I found it like just a couple of days ago and it included this lovely book that she had sent to me at the end of 2019, if you can believe it. It's so beautifully done. It goes through all the planets. It talks about how the different planets speak to you, where it comes to relationship, how they show up in relationship. And it's so beautifully done as well. So if you are inspired, make sure that you check out uh, my friend's book. She is such a bucket of love. I had her on my channel before as well. Um, and she just is a shining star and doing such great things in astrology. Online events, I got a whole lot of online events coming up, I tell you, not only like next week, all through May. May is gonna be very, very busy for me with all the online events that I am going to be doing. Synchronicity University continues into next week where we will be looking at Chiron and Aspect to planets and chart points. So that is going to be a very revealing and rewarding class. So that's Synchronicity University, the spring session. And then I'm gonna to have to take a little bit of a break because I got a few other things happening before I come back to the spring session. One of them is the phenomenal event at astrologyrisingcostarica.com, now online. And this is shaping a whole new paradigm where it comes to astrology. Uh, this truly week-long party, it is going to be an online party with actual dinner parties and uh, workshops and talks by some of the most brilliant astrologers alive today. It is hosted by Kaipacha. It features me and it features the great Rick Levine, Maurice Fernandez, brilliant evolutionary astrologer. We also have Timothy Holloran, Ari Wolf, Christina Claudel, uh, Sol Yonason, and we have Julia Sima. So there are a lot of truly renowned astrologers who are part of this huge party that is gonna be taking place. I'm teaching a whole bunch of classes as well. And so please be sure to check out the links in the description below. And we already have a whole bunch of people signed up. I think about 200 people are signed up so far, so you know, it's going to be an incredible energy, an incredible crowd, and I look forward to meeting you there. And then I am going to be teaching online with Astrology Toronto. I will be also teaching online with the Norwat Conference that is now online. Again, brilliant astrologers, a ton of the most talented astrologers in the world today are going to be part of this huge online event with Norwak. And then my event that was supposed to be in Las Vegas with the Stargazers group there is now going to be online as well. So lots of teaching throughout May is gonna be taking place, lots of places for us to be connected and I look forward to meeting you online. And finally, check out my partnership with Cosmogram where you can have a printed 
printout of me talking about your chart. So in partnership with Cosmogram, I have worked so hard to create these incredible computer generated reports. And this is me going through your chart one step at a time, talking about the different aspects that are playing out there. I look at each of the planets, what sign they're in, what house they're in, what aspects they're making and what that means for you. You get this chart delivered within hours of purchase. You get it delivered by email. And so this really is something that I had wanted to do for so long, but I do believe that this is something valuable and personal, and it allows you to really consider yourself on paper, to really consider these different parts of you that the planets represent and how that shows up in your life. So all of this is explored in your unique birth chart and in this natal chart reading that includes my interpretation of the different things in your chart. So have a look at that. Links in the description below and I hope you absolutely love it. And thank you. Thank you so much for this moment with you. We have got an incredible decade ahead, certainly. But this summer, as well as we navigate this time, is set to be important and deeply relevant. It is set to be a time that is going to show us our connection to each other, how interconnected we are in so many different ways, physically, online, on mind levels, on intellectual levels. But it is also a time that is going to show us something of compassion what it means to have healthy compassion for each other. So I'm gonna invite you once again to see the Venus Retrograde Special Horoscope, the Summer of Love Special Horoscope, link in the description below. And thank you for your trust. Thank you for this moment with you. It'll be a great week, enjoy.